Now my last two videos on YouTube, do I leave my central heating system on 24-7 or how to make your house warm, I've done really well. But I'm still getting a load of comments on leaving your heating on 24-7 costs a fortune because your central heating pump will be running longer if I reduce my flow temperature. Anyway, in this video, what we're going to do is kill the myth that it costs a fortune to run your central heating pumps. So, let's get on with it. Now, back in 2009, the EU brought out a regulation called ERP, which stands for Energy Related Products. And basically what they said was your white goods, so your washing machines and your fridge freezers, had to have an energy label telling the customer exactly how energy saving their products were. Then on the 26th of September 2015, they introduced boilers to the ERP scheme, which basically said that Boilers, cylinders, uh, hot water heaters and your solar panels and stuff had to be rated from A to G. Now, if you added thermostats onto your boiler, it kind of made your boiler an A++++. And this became known as Boiler Plus. So, Boiler plus your controls. This is what a standard efficiency pump looks like in a boiler. And this is what an ERP pump looks like inside a boiler. Did you know a heat pump has two ERP pumps? One here in the unit and another one here on the actual cylinder. They revised it again in 2021, which basically put us from A to G. So that's where we're up to with ERP, but one of the things what happened in 2015 is that the central heating pumps had to go from fixed speed or three speed pumps to these ERP rated pumps. Now, these aren't from combi boilers or system boilers. These are what would go on a traditional central heating system. Now this is the brand new Stuart Turner Pulse central heating pump, which would go in a traditional central heating system, so outside your boiler. And this is an old Vilo Gold pump, which is a fixed speed. So let's find out exactly what the difference is with these two pumps. But first of all, let's talk about watts and how much energy costs in the UK. Now, up to the 31st of December this year, 2024, electricity costs in the UK are standing at 24.5 pence per kilowatt hour. But we've only got a few weeks left of this year. So next year, so from January to March 2025, it's going to increase to 24.86 pence per kilowatt hour. And we're going to have a standing charge of 60p, nearly 61p per day. 61p for doing nothing? Well, they basically say your standing charge is to pay for all the upkeep of the system and to keep you connected to the grid. Anyway, let's take a few standard household items in the UK and see how much they cost to run per hour. So then we can compare it then to a central heating pump as soon as everybody keeps saying it costs too much to keep your heating on because your pump costs too much. Anyway, an electric grill will say it's uh, 1,500 watts or 1 1.5 kilowatts because there are 1,000 watts in a kilowatt. It costs 33.5p per kilowatt hour if we take your iron. Again, if we've got 1,500 watts or 1.5 kilowatts, it's going to cost the same, 33.5p per kilowatt hour. A toaster, if you've got a 1,000 watt toaster or 1 kilowatt toaster, it's going to cost you 3p or nearly 4p for 10 minutes. And did you know, you know the little dials on the front of your toaster? That's not how brown it makes your toast. 
It's how many minutes it runs. Did you know that? Anyway, a microwave, a uh, thousand watt microwave, it's going to cost you 22.3p per hour to run. Uh, electric hob, so if you've got an electric hob, two kilowatt one, that's going to cost you 55p an hour to run. And if you've got your vacuum cleaner, 900 watt one to 0.9 kilowatts, that's going to cost you 25p per hour to run. So there's a reason I've got now for my wife to say I can't vac up because it costs too much. So now we know about how much it costs per kilowatt hour in the UK for running our electricity. Let's have a quick look at the old Vilo Gold and see exactly how many watts this one uses. Now in speed one, this will use 40 watts. In speed two, it will use 60 watts. And in speed three, we'll use a massive 88 watts. <laughs> now, even the older pumps than these, add an average of using about 100 watts. Now, if you start having a dirty central heating system, where you've got sludgy water and stuff like that, it's going to put even more pressure on the pump, which is going to use even more watts. But with the ERP pumps, they're slightly different. First of all, this one has got a built-in jacket to keep it warm. So now I've taken its clothes off, you can see it does look like a standard central heating pump at the bottom end. But this is where all the magic happens. Now on the Stuart Turner Pulse, it will go down to using a minimum of 4.5 watts. And at full tilt, it will only use 38 watts. Now the way this ERP pump works in the combi boiler is slightly different. This has a 230 volt connection and a 24 volt connection. And it's the actual PCB inside the boiler, which controls the pump via these little things at the back here called thermistors. So depending on what the boiler is sensing, the boiler will speed up or slow down the pump. Again, if your thermostatic rad valve is shut, then this will slow down, and if your rad valves open up, it will speed up. Now, a boiler, combi boiler like this one, will probably use in its day about 100 to 200 watts. So still a lot less than boiling a kettle to run your boiler for the day. So, let's have a quick look now and see how much these actually cost to run. Now, to give me a little bit more of an accurate figure for this, what I've done is I've taken the standing charge of nearly 61p a day, divided it by 24, because it's 24 hours in a day, to give us 2.5p per hour. So we're going to add that then to our kilowatt hour charge of 24.86 to give us 27.4, nearly 27.5p per kilowatt hour. So that's what it's going to cost us to run anything for an hour. Now, if we take this standard central heating pump, which is 100 watts, this is how much it's going to cost a day. Now, if we're running it for 24 hours, it's going to be 27.4 times 24 is 657.6. But, 100 watts is a tenth of a kilowatt. So if we divide it by 10, it's gonna give us 65p, nearly 66p a day to run for a full day for that central heating pump. So even running it for a full day, it's less than a pound. Then if we take a 40 watt pump, because it's uh, uh, an ERP pump running at its maximum, for 24 hours, that will reduce down to 40p. So a lot less because it's 60% it's less from that pump. Now, if it only ran for 12 hours, we'd be down to 14p for 12 hours. This isn't a massive figure, is it? But if we've got an ERP pump running at its lowest, four watts, this could be down to one and a half P. 
for 12 hours. So when you guys are saying you're not talking about how much it costs to run the pumps, if you've got an ERP pump, it's next to nothing a day. If you've got an old rubbish pump which isn't ERP, then get it swapped for an ERP pump because it'll soon make back for what it's cost you. So let's now go over to one of these ERP pumps and actually prove what it goes down to. Now here you can see on this heat only boiler I've got this Grumfoss Alpha 2 ERP pump connected to this system. At the moment this pump is telling me that it is drawing 9 watts because it's set on auto adapt. So auto adapt is basically what it's doing is it's checking the flow and the pressure and it's reducing the speed of the pump to match what it's got. There is also some manual settings for this. So if you press this arrow, it will then take us to minimum pressure. Then we've got mid pressures and then up to maximum pressure. And you can see now the watts are increasing because the speed of the pump is increasing. So if you've got a constant pressure system, you can use this side, or if you want a constant flow, this is on its maximum setting of number three on this side, which is giving us 44 watts. We can then go to setting number two, which again will reduce it down to 17 watts, and then we can go on to the minimum setting, and that should go down to five watts. If we put it onto the auto adapt, which should then learn the system as it's going along, it will sort itself out and it will use its minimum speed to adapt to the pressures it's getting. So as your thermostatic radiator valves are closing, it will reduce and as they're open, it will increase. So you can see at the moment now, it's gone to 11 watts. So this pump, like a lot now of these ERP pumps, will adapt to what your central heating system requires so it saves you money. And this hopefully shows that central heating pumps don't actually use that much energy when they're running if you've got the up-to-date ERP pumps.